The problem with patience and discipline is that developing each of them requires both of them. I really enjoyed listening to this book. I listened to it as an audiobook while I was working out in the gym over the course of a week. And there are some key lessons that I think I took away. In this video, I'm going to break down the three top lessons that I think I took away from Practicing Minds and how I'm going to be implementing that into my life. The book uses quite a beautiful analogy, I think, of a flower and the life cycle of a plant. It talks about how we don't look at a seed for a flowering plant and think that this seed is a failure because it doesn't have a flower. When we plant that seed in the ground and it starts to grow a root and its first leaves, we don't look at it and think this little seedling is a failure because it doesn't have a flower. When that plant does start to grow and it gets its first buds and they're not quite open yet, we don't look at it and think, well, this plant is failing. There's no flower on this plant. And when a plant has flowered and then that flower has withered and died and the plant kind of returns to the earth ready to grow again next year, we don't look at the plant and think that this plant has failed because there's currently no flower on it. And we don't look at that withered plant and think, this plant has failed. It hasn't already grown its second set of flowers. The same is not true when we look at ourselves. Far too often we measure ourselves against a goal that we haven't reached yet. And as soon as we reach that goal, rather than congratulating ourselves or taking stock of how far we've come, we just set ourselves the next goal and instantly start to measure ourselves against that instead. This is just setting ourselves up for failure. There is no way that we can ever reach a point at which there's not something further we can do. Instead, if we look at the process, how much better we've gotten at doing whatever it is that we do, how much time and energy and effort we're able to put in now compared to how much time, effort and attention we were able to give it at the start. The second lesson from the book I think is best summarised with the quote, the problem with patience and discipline is that developing each of them requires both of them. Patience and discipline are really difficult skills to master and they're ones that take a literal lifetime. It takes a huge amount of patience and diligence and discipline to get yourself to increase your patience. And we have to be very patient with ourselves and very dedicated to a task in order to increase our discipline in that task. So it's, it's quite a paradox that we find ourselves in. The book does suggest some ways of getting around this. First of all, is an idea that instead of trying to train your patience, change your perspective. Tom Cerner, the author of the book, his career is fixing pianos and he uses some analogies in fixing pianos and also some analogies with music. And I think the one with music, I think we can all appreciate. Lots of people have tried to learn an instrument and decided that they're failing because after a number of lessons or a number of sessions, they are not able to play the song that they were hoping they'd be able to play on that instrument. If more of us looked at the process of learning to play that song, the ability to break that song down into different sections, to spend time and energy and discipline and patience learning how to play each of those sections as the true skill in playing, rather than the ability to play the full song as we have it imagined in our minds, then more of us would stick with whatever it is that we're doing. As a medical student, I know that I fall into this trap a lot. There are a vast array of things that I need to know. I'm good at some of them, I'm bad at some of them, some of them I couldn't care less about, and some of them I think are really interesting. All of them are part of me going through medical school, and I think all too often it's, it's very easy to forget that the goal of medical school is not to pass the exams at the end of medical school or to do as well as possible in the exams at the end of medical school even. The point of medical school is to learn and that process and the patience and the determination that it requires to go in each day and improve your knowledge and improve your knowledge recall even when you're not able to see tangible results, that is the true skill that you're learning. By shifting our perspective away from reaching a goal and shifting our perspective towards being perfect at practice, then we can be happy with the work that we're putting in every day. We stop focusing on an end point and we start focusing on the process and the journey. And then before we know it, we've either reached or surpassed that original goal that we had in our mind, but we've been too busy focusing on progress to think about how far we have to get. And I think the third and final lesson that I'm gonna be taking from this book is the idea of do, observe, and correct, or D-O-C. The do, observe, and correct model is proposed during the book as a way of realizing those small things that get in our way. If you imagine the process of 
starting a task that you need to be doing and it eventually leading to you doing something else and procrastinating. So for example, for me as a medical student, that would be sitting down at my computer, starting to do some questions, getting a bit bored with the questions and deciding I'll listen to some music, maybe then deciding that maybe I'll give myself a little bit of a break as a reward for having done a couple of questions extra, and then I end up sitting watching something on YouTube. In that cycle, I've done the correct thing at first. I've, I've done the job that I meant to be doing. What I needed to do though was to observe the point at which I didn't want to be doing it anymore and to really hone in on what it was in that process that I didn't want to be doing. If the problem was that I was getting bored with the questions that I was doing, then the correcting that I needed to do would be to find a way that the task is less boring. If the problem that I was having was that the questions were too difficult, then the correction that I needed to do would be to take a step back, do some more revision, or to find some questions that are less hard. The real goal or the real task, the real achievement in getting anything done is realizing what the barriers are to you getting that done and dismantling them one by one. And honestly, that is the most satisfying thing you can do. Having a task that you need to do, which you honestly find mind-numbingly boring, incredibly difficult, not worth your time and working out what it is about that task that you just dislike and correcting that to the point at which you can just sit down and do that task for hours is one of the most satisfying things you can do. The Practicing Mind by Tom Sterner teaches us that by going back to the basics and the fundamentals of practice and focus, we're able to build our patience, we're able to build our determination towards a goal and we're able to realize that our true joy in a process, our true joy in achieving something is not in reaching that end goal, but it's in mastering the journey. When we subtly shift towards focusing on and finding joy in the process of achieving rather than having the goal, then we've gained a new skill. And once mastered, it is magical and incredibly empowering.